Welcome everyone to the first ever episode of MFW Warzone. It's our flagship show. I'm so happy you could join me. MFW stands for Multiverse Fantasy Warfare. And what does that mean? Well, you're about to find out. We've collected uh, a cadre of characters from across the multiverse. Not just one multiverse, but quite a few. These will be duking it out in singles action, tag team action, battle royals, all manner of professional wrestling competition for your viewing pleasure. My name is Roman Empire. Thank you so much once again for joining me. And let's kick things off here in Dallas, Texas with our first ever matchup. So who's it going to be? Our first ever participant to make their way to the ring doesn't come alone. They are two thirds of the men's division of the Teen Titans. Beast Boy and Cyborg will be competing in tag team action accompanied to the ring by Red Robin, aka Robin, aka Timothy Drake. That's right, we have quite a few different. Robins and former Robins, so we have to differentiate exactly who it is making their way to the ring on this one. And the Child Genius will be accompanying these two for a potential shot at the vacant World's Finest Tag Team Championships. That's why I said vacant, because all of our titles are undecided. They will all be competed for, nobody will be handed titles. Anybody who wants to earn a championship has to do so in action in our upcoming pay-per-view, Flashpoint. Flashpoint will be much sooner than most of our pay-per-views because we have to establish our universe, our multiverse, and what better way to do that than at Flashpoint? For those nerds who know exactly what Flashpoint is, we'll be essentially remaking the face of our multiverse with that pay-per-view. Best way to do that is to decide some champions. And here we go, coming our way to the ring, our contenders for the tag team titles here, Deadpool and Cable. That's right, Cable and Deadpool, an odd couple of the comics world. Veterans, very crafty Deadpool versus a, a very, very tactically sound and dangerous Cable. Put them together, you get a very dangerous team to go up against. But both of these teams have an equal shot at gaining contendership for the world's finest tag team titles. Now, why do I keep calling them those? It's not just because of the name. It's because we have two brands. That's right, we have Warzone is our, our blue and black brand, if you will, or blue and gold, or blue and silver, whatever combo you want to look at. And then our other brand, which you'll see later, is called Fight Night. Uh, we won't get into exactly what kind of show that is, because I want you to be surprised. But there's definitely a different tone to that show. That being said, they each have their own titles. Some are shared, very few are. But the world's finest are exclusive to Warzone. Both these teams vying for it, so let's get this started. Deadpool, starting off taking control with a suplex, going right on the offensive. No chain wrestling here. Just getting straight to it. Big knee to the face. And you gotta wonder if the experience difference is going to come into play as an advantage for Cable and Deadpool or the fact that they have sort of an odd couple chemistry is actually gonna work against them. Obviously the Teen Titans, very well known for how well they work together, know each other so well, work on a, a different level when it comes to team chemistry. Oh, snap suplex in return for the one he just received. So. We're going to see a difference of experience level from two individuals versus the experience level as a team from the Teen Titans. That could be the deciding factor. Tag made. Ooh, Gutbuster setting him up, and then a big knee from Cyborg. Cyborg, obviously the powerhouse of the group, very well balanced against someone like Cable, whereas Deadpool and Beast Boy have similar more uh, acrobatic and athletic movesets. So it's an interesting matchup in that they're very even in that respect. Oh, deadlifting him into it. Oh! Looked like a, a, a wheelbarrow neckbreaker. Or water wheel neckbreaker, perhaps. Taking him back into the corner. Big splashes here. See, this is another ex sort of a advantage of a well-established tag team. That they know how to isolate their opponents in their own corner. Keep them from making the tag. Oh, big impact on that spine buster. Deadpool trying to make a tag, but Cyborg has done a good job up till now of keeping him out of that corner. One. Only one count. And while we're at it, I want to thank 
uh, all of the people in the Community Creations Talent Agency for helping us collect this pool of 100, that's right, 100 different uh, denizens of the multiverse. It's going to be a lot to, to show you, so of course there's going to be some times where people just aren't showcased and we apologize to them for that, but everybody who manages to earn their spot on a show is going to be featured. You gotta think that the winners of this match, obviously, will be two of those participants. So we're now working over Cable's arm here with the stomps. To that cybernetic arm. Also, that being said, we want to thank the uh, CAW, our developmental brand, for polishing some of the rougher stones that we had here with the Community Creations Talent Agency. Not everybody comes to us a finished product, but we do our best to mold them into a finished product for your viewing pleasure. Overhead, belly to belly, that's the power we're talking about here. Cyborg capable of lifting someone as large as Cable. Obviously, very impressive. Oh, looks like he's got him up. This is, this is his finisher, going for the Titanfall. Marching his way through into the middle of the ring. Big slam. That Titanfall landing you right on the back. One, two, only a two count. Obviously, Cable not nearly as uh, damaged. Hasn't been in this match as long as Deadpool. If that had been Deadpool, might have been a different story. Taking him into the corner. Attempted to go for a double team. It looked like... Oh, Cable taking Beast Boy out. This is smart. Taking the partner out so he can't interfere, can't assist, if you manage to take advantage of his partner and get the pin. Very wise tactical. Oh, deadlift, gut wrench, suplex. It's a like gut wrench German. Obviously, you're going to see matches that you've never seen before, like this one. Cable and Deadpool have never faced off against the Teen Titans in this manner, but you're also going to see some classic matchups, uh, some rivalries you've seen on the pages of comic books before, but never done in the professional wrestling ring. There's a tag team finisher going for the pin. Not even a one count. Beast Boy in there very quickly breaking it up but uh, as we were saying you're going to see some matchups you've seen before some you've never seen before but all of them bound to impress and amaze I would say guaranteed but we can't afford to give you your money back this is a shoestring budget we're working on here obviously there will be some ways you see our budget cuts but hopefully we've covered for it with production value like here at Warzone Taunting, not sure this is a great idea, giving Deadpool time to recover. Now, obviously, you're seeing no displays of superhuman abilities. That is because we have power dampeners in the arena for the safety of not just the competitors, but, of course, our fans. We would not want them to become, uh, well, uh, casualties. Collateral damage. Yes, that's a, a more legally appropriate term. Oh, another neckbreaker. There, they will have access to a minimal amount of their power, obviously, Superhumanly strong athletes will still be stronger than most of the roster. Those who are superhuman speed will be faster, etc. Uh, and you may see some glimpses of abilities that last for brief moments, enough to perhaps turn the tide of a match, but nothing that will be an unfair advantage going into the start of any of our competition. Big clothesline. Oh, what is this? Calling for. Wait, hey, come on, ref, get Red Robin out of there! Obviously, our rule books are a little different in what we uh, allow our refs to be leaning about. Triple power bomb to Deadpool. Red Robin getting out of the ring. I I'm not sure the ref should be allowing this sort of behavior, so I'm a little disappointed. We're going for the three count here, and it's. Oh, not enough! 2.9 kicks out. That is the resiliency of Deadpool, even after a triple power bomb like that. Still managing to kick out. Not sure how I feel about that, though. If anything, I think Red Robin should be ejected from ringside at the very least. Oh, Shape Shifter! That is a... Actually, a modified Shape Shifter. A, he has a finisher very similar to that move, but more of a cutter. Hence why he didn't go for the pin. Knee to the back now. I'm surprised. I would have thought he would have gone for the finisher there, but he didn't. Right drop to the back of the head of Famouser. Again, we apologize for our lenient rules policy here, but uh, you got to do what you got to do, and we are dealing with superhuman competitors in many respects, so sometimes our uh, less powered individuals have to do what they can to even the odds. Oh, face buster. 
Can't really blame them in that respect. Super kick to the face. Going for the pin. Only a one count. Broken up. That super kick. Of course, referred to as the money shot. No surprise from uh, the Merc with the mouth there. Some people will know that move back in the 90s with a very different uh, top rope maneuver, but that name has been adopted for multiple reasons by the ever so on the nose Deadpool. What is this? It's like a outside cable being manhandled by Cyborg in the back there. Ooh, busted open. That's right, we have sensors in the mass. That's the shapeshifter. Hit it. Just hit it. This is it. One, two, three. And the Teen Titans are your first ever winners of a match here on Warzone. Congratulations to them, albeit by some controversial means. That being said, they still... Referee's decision is final. They will be one of your contending teams for the vacant World's Finest Tag Team Championships. Obviously, this triple power bomb here, we thought it was it, but kicked out at a 2.9, that resiliency. And we thought we hit, we saw a shapeshifter earlier, but that was just a cutter from Beast Boy. Sort of took us off guard. Looked like he was setting him up for that move, but right here, that is the shapeshifter, planting him face first, going right in for the pin, and this is just after Cyborg took Cable out on the outside, making him unable to break up the pin. Very smart tag team tactics from this group, Team Titans potentially going to mold themselves as one of the preeminent teams on the roster. Congratulations to them as they uh, have a little victory lap here. Beast Boy and Cyborg going to Flashpoint. But we move on to our second match of our first half of Warzone. That's right, I said first half because there will be a second half coming up that you will see the very next time one of these videos is uploaded. But we're moving on to singles action now. Accompanied to the ring by the rest of the Fantastic Four, Reed Richards, a.k.a. Mr. Fantastic. Accompanied by Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, Ben Grimm, the Thing, and in the back there you see the Invisible Woman, Susan Storm, who you can see thanks to some filters on our lighting here. Obviously we allow uh, some cosmetic use of abilities on the ramp. Those go away as soon as you step into those uh, barricades. Obviously for falls count anywhere matches and the like. We have to increase the range. But for designated sim singles competition here, that is not an issue. Reed Richards making his way to the ring. Set to go up against probably his most known nemesis in comic books. For those of you who don't know who that is or... Being introduced to these characters for the first time will keep that a surprise, but some of you will already know who that opponent is likely to be. The winner here has a possible contendership to be placed in a Flashpoint main event for the Multiversal Championship. That's right, that's our main title, the Multiversal Championship. Obviously, both of these individuals that are about to go at it are very well-known, very established no reason they shouldn't be considered in that title picture. But will the numbers game that we're seeing here be the advantage of Reed Richards? We just saw how that came into play with the Teen Titans. Obviously that triple power bomb, albeit controversial, still did come into play. Will that affect this matchup? And as the lights go out, you are about to be introduced to one of our preeminent villains of the roster. Someone with quite a history, especially with the opponent standing across from him in the ring. So why don't we hit those lights and show everybody who it is. Victor Von Doom. That's right, Dr. Doom, the iron-fisted tyrant of Latveria. Coming straight out of the old country for a matchup here. With his longtime rival, nemesis, former friend, Reed Richards. Obviously with so much on the line. And of course, the egos of both these men. It is no surprise this will likely be a fairly unforgiving matchup. Probably not going to see a lot of uh, respectful handshakes here. 
you're more likely to see some viciousness, particularly out of this man. If he wants the multiversal title, if that is his goal here in MFW, you have to imagine he will stop at nothing to get it. Soaking in the jeers of the fans and could not care less. This man believes he is destined to sit at the top of the mountain here in MFW. And it's hard to argue that. Very much has the potential to go all the way and be the first ever multiversal champion. But he has to get through Reed Richards first. And with Thing, Human Torch, and Invisible Woman on the outside, that's going to be no easy task. Ready to get this first ever singles match of Warzone started. So let's see how this goes. Already with a neck breaker from Doom. Talked about that viciousness going straight for these brutal attacks. Stomp to the face. Those metal greaves across the jaw. Obviously, there's some minimal elasticity here allowed for Mr. Fantastic to endure some really brutal hits from some of the stronger opponents. It's probably going to save him in the long run, but got to think that's so incredibly painful. Oof. Kick to the ribs. Working over. Victor Von Doom with the elbow drop here. Surprisingly now, Mr. Fantastic quite in control of the offense of this matchup here. Uh, unrelenting, and probably wisely so. Ooh, went in for a clothesline and just missed it. Oh, but the weight difference. See, that, that, that's going to be a big factor here is with that suit. Oh, big right hand. He classifies as a super heavyweight. He's incredibly uh, strong, resilient in that armor. Oh, caught him. Hung up on the ropes. Nice reversal there. Reed Richards is going to have to rely on quickness, agility. Being the smaller opponent, he's not going to be able to really overpower Victor Von Doom. His camel clutch, obviously, is similar to the one that was just applied on him earlier. But slips out, grabbing the ankles. See the Fantastic Four watching on the outside. So far, staying out of this matchup. I commend them. Obviously, we saw the temptation to use the numbers game, especially when you're used to situations that don't have set rules. You have to keep that in mind. All of the participants in MFW are used to doing whatever it takes to pick up the win within their own personal codes of honor, ethics, combat, whatever you... Oh, reversal here. Reverse DDT. So you're going to see a lot of that where it blur the line that you would normally see between if you going for the pin one, only a one count, between behavior that's acceptable and unacceptable, breaks the rules, bends the rules, and who employs it. But that's just what makes us a little bit different here at MFW. No, it doesn't stand for my face when no, it doesn't stand for anything vulgar. Get your heads out of the gutter. It's not mother effing wrestling. This is multi- Oh! Got it locked in! Iron Grip! Could this be it? The finisher from Doom, and he's out! The Iron Grip of the Tyrant lays out Reed Richards out of nowhere. Just see how quickly he can apply that choke with that gauntlet. It's over. Dr. Doom, one of your participants for the Multiversal Championship at Flashpoint. With him in the title picture, that's going to be a very interesting matchup. As, as we just saw, all it takes is a split second for him to apply that iron grip. And if you're not able to power out, find a way to slip free, chances are you're going to pass out. An impressive win here for Victor Von Doom. Congratulations to our first ever singles victor in MFW. But we're about to round out with our sort of intermission main event, if you will, our midpoint. Obviously, the second half of Warzone will be coming up in our next upload, but can't go out on a, a down note we've got to have a big middle of the card matchup to spice things up and we've got something for you we're going to decide one of the two women's contenders for the multiversal women's championship and we're going to do things a little differently for one of those contenders we're about to find out how as our first competitor makes their way to the ring we should tell you they're not just the first, they're not the first of two, they are the first of eight, an eight women's battle royal to determine one of our two contenders for the Multiversal Women's Championship. 
It's going to be an over-the-top rope battle royal, obviously. And the first competitor here, an icon of superheroines throughout comics, Supergirl. Making her way to the ring. She is obviously the cousin of Superman. One of, we should specify. Because this is multiversal fantasy warfare. That means there are different versions of some of our characters. There are characters from different universes. Some holding similar names to one another. Different versions even within the same universe. But she's not the only House of L related member. Even in this matchup. Some of you will know who I'm talking about. Speaking of which, making her way to the ring, another Kara zor from a different Earth, Power Girl. These two, obviously teammates as well. We have a growing women's tag team division. Titles will not be decided at Flashpoint. We have quite a few titles to decide, so there's only so many that we can do in a single pay-per-view, but... Don't worry, many of these titles will be decided sooner rather than later. But tonight they are here as singles competitors, every woman for themselves. Power Girl obviously hoping here to get a shot at the Multiversal Women's Championship. And what a, a holder that would be, really the epitome of a Multiversal Women's Champion would be someone like Power Girl coming from Earth 2. Uh, apologize to the families watching out there. You might want to move your kids away from that shot. We cannot be blamed for the dimensions of our multi-dimensional participants. <clears throat> right, moving on. Let's get our third participant out here before I get in legal trouble. This participant from the Marvel Multiverse she is known by a few names. She's been Marvel Girl. She then became Just Jean Grey. And then the Phoenix. She's a top contender here. Many might see her as a favorite. Or would. If she wasn't going up against the likes of Supergirl and Power Girl as we just saw. It's very hard to pick a favorite when you have so many dominant female performers combatants in this ring only three participants in though still have five left so you gotta imagine there are going to be some big names in this matchup and if you're saying well I didn't see some bigger names when we get to our eighth participant well maybe you should tune in for the next episode and see who our other female competitors are for that championship. And if you still haven't seen the ones you're looking for, well then maybe they're on the Fight Night roster, so you should keep watching as we get deeper into MFW. Bringing out our fourth competitor. This is what we're talking about with Multiversal Warfare. Spider Gwen, aka Spider Woman. Gwen Stacy. In the Spider-Verse, if you will, is the uh, female Spider-Man of a particular universe who became so popular, she's entered the mainstream continuity. That's right, she's not from the main continuity, but she gained such popularity, became such a mainstay. And now she's here with us here at MFW on Warzone, contending for the Multiversal Women's Championship. Obviously a very, very capable competitor, but she's going to be at a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to the power game. You're seeing a lot like Supergirl, Power Girl. Uh, some participants who will enter later, you will see, who are quite known for having that sort of strength and raw power. She's going to have to rely on acrobatics, quickness, speed, agility, which we have seen in Battle Royals before can be very advantageous. We'll find out if it is against these competitors here tonight, though. Big ovation here 
for Spider Gwen, but we are still only halfway through this Battle Royals participants. So we got more to come. Thank you all again for joining me for our first video. That's right, I am Roman Empire, your commentator, host, MC, if you will. And uh, I'm so pleased and it brings me so much joy to share this passion project of mine with you. And I hope you'll keep watching, keep joining us for more action as She-Hulk makes her way to the ring. She, one of my odds-on favorites to win a match like this. So much power, so much raw strength. You have to imagine someone like this, even without full access to her power from our very wonderful power dampeners in this arena, she's still going to be able to toss around some of our smaller opponents with su surprising and frightening ease. Jennifer Walters, cousin of Bruce Banner, a.k.a. the Hulk. For insurance purposes, we have decided, at least for our initial rosters, that her cousin and she will not be allowed on the same show. A little bit too much property damage. So you can see Hulk, a.k.a. Bruce Banner, on Fight Night. Another reason to stay tuned to our second brand. Zatanna Zatara, another DC competitor here in this matchup. The Magician. Making her way to the ring. Another outpowered individual, but with a trick up her sleeve, sometimes quite literally. So you have to imagine, you can't really count her out just on the basis of raw strength. It'll be interesting to see how she strategizes in this matchup, how she plays against the strength advantage of some of these competitors. As we see that magic just there, producing those scarves from nothing from her sleeves. Ever the show woman. Still have a couple of competitors left here to enter. And while we're waiting, I'm going to ask you very much if you like this video, if you enjoyed what you're seeing here, if you want to see more of this, and if you want to give some of your suggestions for matchups you'd love to see in the future, please like, comment, subscribe to this channel. It would mean the world to me. I thank you so much all for your support. Uh, and even if you don't and you just keep watching anyway, uh, I'll, I will be grateful. Every view makes me smile on the inside. Just like this competitor here, Starfire, one of the more bubbly participants here in MFW. A member of the Teen Titans, as we saw as well, looking for more success for that faction here. As I said, though, it means the world to me that you're joining me. Thank you so much. Uh, this is my first ever foray into this sort of thing. It's my first ever video. So, uh, I thank you for popping my YouTube cherry as we move on. And uh, if there are any kids watching, do not ask your parents what that means. Take it literally. I was talking about cherries. I like fruit. And as we move on, we get our final participant in this eight-woman battle royal. Another member of the Teen Titans and a hugely popular female superstar here in MFW. She is the darker half of the women's tag team of the Teen Titans that you just saw the first half of, Raven. Raven, obviously the daughter of Trigon, has a bit of a dark history, conflicted feelings, but here there are no conflicted feelings. She knows that her partner is in this match, but it doesn't matter. The winner of this match gets a multiversal women's championship match, so you have to imagine she's going to do whatever it takes to win this eight-woman battle royal. And she makes her way to the ring here. You can feel the tonal shift between characters like Starfire and Raven, how very different they are, and yet part of the same unit works so well together. She has every possibility of winning this matchup. A very capable competitor, very crafty, intelligent. Her power can be a, her own down, downfall sometimes. That being said, with the power dampeners in the arena, that's not so much an issue. So she's far more in control of herself than she might seem. May not have access to her magic, but still a dangerous 
competitor in this ring and we're about to find out let's kick this off already getting off to a chaotic start things pairing off as these eight women brawl trying to eliminate each other early supergirl and spider gwen being pushed a she-hulk and power girl raven already taking it to her own partner starfire i think that's surprising we're seeing them go after each other so soon rather than working together But again, it's every woman for herself. Can't really blame them for going at it this early on. Perhaps it's easier to rip off the band-aid than trying to deal with each other at the end when everything is on the line. Ooh, turning into a mob in the corner there. Ooh, getting hung up in the ropes with a, a sort of Michinoku driver from Raven to Power Girl there. Uh, oh, she has got Supergirl over. Oh, looks like she's giving way. Oh, not enough. Not enough. Just manages to escape. Raven almost has Starfire out as well. Not enough. Things starting to break down. Utter chaos. All of these women want a shot at that multiversal women's championship. MFW's Warzone's exclusive women's title. Things just starting to break down here. But wait a minute, she has got Supergirl in the corner. Could she get her out of here? She's up. Oh, and she's over. Is that going to be it? She's out. First one out is Supergirl. I think that's a huge surprise, the elimination there. And there goes Spider-Gwen. Spider-Gwen is second. I think everybody is shocked. Supergirl the first to be eliminated. That's going to be a huge black mark. On her on her record books there. That's got to be so so heartbreaking. Oh wait, and there goes Starfire. Two eliminations already for She-Hulk. Raven hanging on, able to get back in the ring. She-Hulk eliminated Supergirl and Starfire. In pretty much rapid succession. Spider Gwen in between them, eliminated by Jean Grey, and Jean Grey now eliminating Raven. Jean Grey and She-Hulk both with two eliminations already. She'll trying to toss Atena out there, and she manages to escape yet again. This is such an impressive performance from She-Hulk and Jean Grey so far, eliminating two apiece as we get down to the last half of this battle royal. Power Girl, Jean Grey, Satana, Zatara, and She-Hulk, and there's... Oh! Big! Wait a minute! Jean Grey's out! Power Girl eliminates Jean Grey. We're watching that slam. Almost missed that elimination. Power Girl, Zatanna, and She-Hulk. Now the final three. I don't think anybody expected Zatanna to be one of those final three, given what we were seeing. Alabama slam here from She-Hulk. Power Girl landing hard and rolling out now for a rest. As we were saying, I don't think anybody was expecting Zatanna to be one of the final three. It just goes to show you, though, it's not all about power, as we saw Supergirl the first one eliminated in surprising fashion. But if you're going to be eliminated, being eliminated by She-Hulk is no shame. That said, you got to think she's disappointed. Came out here for a potential title match and just eliminated first of all these competitors. That's got to be gnawing at her. You're going to think she's going to probably want to bounce back and do something about that in the coming weeks. Satana now brutal with the forearm shots across the face of She-Hulk, but she's going to need to be going up against such a strong opponent. Oh, looked like she was setting up. Zatanna setting up Power Girl there. Didn't pay off, though. Probably should have kept her focus on She-Hulk while Power Girl was staying out of it. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, nope, just the Snake Eyes into the turnbuckle. Now these two Goliaths of the women's division. Such power and raw force. Ooh, backflip. Gets out of that backdrop attempt. Big chop across the chest and then a... Oh! Twisting! Face buster. Rolling cutter of sorts. She has the town on the ropes now. Up on the shoulder. Just tossed in a power slam and there goes Zatanna. And it's now down to Power Girl and She-Hulk. The winner here becomes one of our two contenders for the Multiversal Women's Championship. It's important to remember... As we see, is she going to go for it? Here we go. Has her up, Gamma. Bomb finisher. 
But this is not a pin or submission matchup. Can't pin her off that. She has to throw her over the top rope. Oh, jawbreaker. Power girl trying to fight back here. Such an impressive display of power, though, on that gamma bomb. Oh, a little bit of hesitancy. Uh, caught her in the end. Power girl takes advantage and now in control. Any woman's matchup on this one. Oof, big elbow drop. Everything on the line here for one of these women. One of these women will face a winner from our next half of Warzone. She's got her up. This could be it. She gets her on those ropes and gets her over. This could be the elimination we've been waiting for. Has her up. That high angle. She-Hulk hanging on. Just manages to slip to the apron. Power Girl still putting the bootster. Is this going to be it? No, fighting out of it. Power Girl seems to have She-Hulk's number, though. Just can't manage to put her away. Keeps reversing and reversing. She-Hulk's got to be frustrated at this point. But if she's not careful and loses her head, she's going to go over that top rope. DDT! Big impact there. She-Hulk has been laid out repeatedly. Oh, drop toe hold though, and maybe, maybe this is the momentum shift. She needs to change everything. Into the corner. She looks like she's resting, perhaps deliberating what she should do here. Maybe waiting for her to get out of that corner and take advantage of that brief moment of transition. Or maybe she's doubting herself. Obviously, she eliminated two before this. Oh, no, no. No doubt there, going for the Gamma Bomb again. A second time, got her by the belt. Down she goes. Oh, caught the back of her head on that bottom rope. You saw her head bounce off that bottom rope. She could be out cold. No, somehow, somehow stays in this, stays aware of her surroundings. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Returning the favor from earlier to Zatanna. Power slam and she's out. She-Hulk is your winner. She will be going to face off against the winner of a match in our next half of Warzone for the Multiversal Women's Championship at Flashpoint. Such an impressive win for Jennifer Walters. Congratulations to her, our first female victor on Warzone in MFW period. And we won't hold that against the Fight Night competitors for having a different show night. Impressive. That power slam you saw eliminating such a, a, a big opponent in this matchup with such power. A very definitive win here for She-Hulk. Thank you all of you for joining us. Again, I urge you, if you like this video, if you enjoyed the matchups you've seen and you want to see more, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me who you want to see going up in these matchups, who you want to see featured. And we'll do our best to give our fans what they want as Jennifer Walters walks out of here. And we will see you next time.